Hello, so this is Evan Rogerson, also known as Nine Motor Gang, and today I'm going to be breaking down the new update for the game manual that just came out today. It's pretty major, and I'm just going to be going in order that they're listed in the change log, so make sure you stick around for the whole thing, because some of the most important ones are at the end, and if this video does well, then I'll probably do this continually for all of the major game manual updates, um, so if you want to see this video do well, just like, like it and leave a comment with all the buzzwords for robotics. So, first thing they did is they changed the field setup. Um, which is pretty major, the positive corners and the negative corners for the blue alliance swapped. So you can see this is the old game manual, and this is the new game manual. So you can see negative positive, positive negative. So now the field is more closely mirrored. Uh, someone on 11591S pointed out these rings are not mirrored. They're the only things that aren't mirrored, which is pretty weird. So I'm probably going to end up emailing the GDC and being like, hey, is this intentional? Because everything is mirrored except for those. So th I expect that to probably get changed at some point in time, guessing it's an oversight. But yeah, pretty interesting that they changed the field setup. This is also for Vexu and skills, even though it doesn't matter. Um, so all across the board, um, definitely a pretty major thing for autonomous routines. I don't like that they're going back to it being mirrored. Um, kind of like they, they used to do that for like, I think Tower Takeover was the last game they did it. But now you essentially have to have two autonomous routines, which is annoying. One for red, one for blue. All right, next thing on the list. Um, they, of course, updated all the manual figures to have the new versions. And then new definition of plane. So they kind of, this goes with 0.5, they kind of updated SG3 and SC7, they're both kind of covering the same thing. So you can see now they have levels 1, 2, 3, 4, obviously level 4 doesn't get any more points than level 3. And then they updated the planes, so your robot could only break two planes at once. Um, as you can see with SC7 in the old manual, that was not there before. Oh, I scroll past it. Now this is what it used to be in the old manual, so... Definitely a nicer visual, easier to see, so probably a good thing on that part. And then you can see down in SG3, they updated it to show there. Um, so I think they didn't actually change any of the rules here, it's just easier to understand, which is going to be good for new people. So yeah, those planes are definitely a lot clearer. You can only break two of them now. So yeah, that's cool. Um, didn't really change anything. But number four is in relation to Q&A. Um, somebody posted this image and was like, hey, how does this score? Um, because which one's the top rank? How does this work? And then the GDC basically responded, That's illegal. Now you get penalized if you try and do this to any of the goals. So don't do that um, if you are planning to do that. All right. Next thing on the list. Yeah, they updated the things. This is just, just the same thing. You can't, like, skip ladders. Uh, it's funny because this isn't actually the right part of the manual that they linked. So SC8. So this was actually a Q&A that I asked. Um, you can see in the new version it says at least one robot contacting the ladder, whereas in the old version it said one robot contacting the ladder. So previously if you had two robots contacting the ladder at the end of Autonomous, you did not get the Autonomous win point. But the GDC fixed that and did not link the correct part in their um, VEX forum post. So added new rule, SC9. This is kind of important. Um, I think it'll definitely play a, a level in really close matches, maybe higher level close matches. So now you have a high stake bonus. Essentially, for every, the top ring is now worth five points, sometimes seven points, probably seven, um, because now you get an extra bonus two points if you, per robot that is hanging, if you get the top ring bonus. Obviously, you're going to have one robot hanging because you just got the high stake, so it's going to be at least five, and then if your alliance partner is also hanging, then it gives you an extra two points, so seven point bonus. Also, I have a Q&A pending right now about what happens with Vexu, because Vexu, you can double your points if you do a buddy hang. So I have a Q&A pending right now, whether or not that two doubles to a four point bonus, six point high stake bonus total. But for VRC, it's definitely just four points. Is SG2, which is really just a semantics thing. So the new version is once the match begins, robots may expand beyond their starting size and configuration with the following criteria. Whereas it used to say may expand beyond 1818, um, just because I think it's mostly these figures down there, uh, D and E, just because you can't necessarily expand all the way out so i think it's just your starting position not the 1818 just kind of clarifying that doesn't actually change anything it just makes it a little bit easier to understand and already very confusing rule so added a bullet point to sg3 to clarify the intent and that's just no skipping long rungs on the ladders and then this was also in a q a um so it's regards to throwing game elements out of the field so throwing goals out of the field is still an instant dq and then it's any team that removes three or more rings from the field in a single match will receive a major violation, which is a DQ. So if you remove three rings from the field during a match, instant DQ, because GDC loves instant DQ rules. Favorite thing. So 
rule SG5 to C to clarify that preloads cannot start in a scored location. So a lot of people realize this pretty easily, but this is tournament in Singapore. Um, that's a legal starting position. Their, their rings were just already scored. Um, I don't know why GDC didn't pick this up when the game manual came out. Like everyone and their grandma noticed this immediately. Um, so now, sad, you cannot have robots starting the preloads in a scored position. Also can't be touching other scored objects or stakes. So sad, GDC fixed a loophole because they don't want fun. SG9 was clarified um, because there was discussion on forums and Discord about like, hey, if you're touching a goal, then it doesn't count as scored. Okay, so what if we throw a goal at the other team that's already elevated? Um, because, yeah, or you, can, so you can't just whack people with goals now in order to make them not elevated, um, which would have been funny. I want to see goal cannon, but sad. So new rule, SG11. This is very, very big, probably the most important part of the game manual update. It's a completely new role, so positive corners are safe during the end game. During the last 10 seconds of the match, robots may not contact mobile goals in the positive corners of the field and may not add or remove mobile goals or rings to and from the positive corners of the field. Again, I'm probably going to ask a Q&A because I know somebody on WPI was asking about this specifically. So, like, what does in the corner mean? I'm going to assume that that just means, like, a goal that is scored in the corner, not just everything that is shoved into the corner. But either way, this is going to be a really, really big rule because now if you have robots, you're sitting in the corner with your positive goal. Um, like I'll just use the old manual just because it's there. So you're sitting in the corner with your positive goal. Now, before, you really couldn't leave there until like maybe like one or two seconds left to go and like probably do a last minute hang because the other team could go in and all they have to do is move it out and now you just first lost probably eight points. But now you can leave there with 10 seconds left and the other team can't do anything about it. So this is really, really big because 10 seconds is enough time to probably get like a tier three hang and get on the high stake. Um, do some stuff with the neutral stakes. Definitely a lot more time. I think it's probably because Grant Cox wants to see robots go high. So he gave you a 10 second time, which you can now easily with a good mechanism climb all the way to the top. So high climb is definitely a lot more viable, especially with the new like high stake now being worth essentially five, sometimes seven points. So definitely trying to incentivize high hanging there. Then essentially they just updated like license plate rules. That's pretty much the exact same thing. Just make sure you have the correct license plates, don't have the wrong license plates showing. And then they did clarify that for skills, you can score rings on the blue alliance stick because I know previously that was kind of like a gray area. Um, and then VexU, that's just changing the thing about um, the new vertical expansion clarifications um, with the new definition of plane. And then they added the Vex AI rule format because everyone knows Vex AI, most popular um, game. So really Vex AI is pretty much the same as last year, just you have VexU rules, but during the driver control, you don't have a driver. The only thing that's really different is I think this rule. Yeah, so you can only climb on your side of the ladder. Um, is really the only different thing. So red would be climbing on this side, blue would be climbing on that side, probably because they don't want robots climbing on top of each other. That would be a mess, but it would have been fun to see. So sad that they did that. But anyway, Vex AI, yeah, pretty much the exact same thing there. Probably not going to do a video on that because nobody does Vex AI. So yeah, overall, I mean, definitely going to change up the strategy a whole lot because um, now you can essentially just camp in your corners I think you're pretty much going to see in most matches, one of the robots during autonomous is just going to go to the corner and they're just going to stay there all game because mathematically it is very, very hard to lose if you can get both positive corners. So I expect to see you're just going to see like both robots on an alliance are sitting in the corner and then the other robots are just 1v1ing, um, probably some hanging at the end. I do expect to see some tier three hangs at some point throughout the season, probably at MOA based on some stuff that I've heard. But yeah, definitely mostly going to be playing wall stakes. Um, I expect the negative corners to get used by the other robots. Just if you do the math and figure some stuff out, pretty obvious to see what some of the main strategies are. So that pretty much wraps everything up.